Hi everyone, this is Bradley. Today I will start to make a tutorial about exploding a planet using animation nodes in Blender 2.81. You can download and know more about animation nodes from the link in the description. This tutorial is intended for those who have no knowledge about animation nodes because this animation is actually super simple. This tutorial may split into two to three parts depending on its length since I may explain a lot of details. Also, a breakdown will always be attached in the comments so you can jump between timeline. If this is a three-part tutorial, part one and two will be about animation and part three will finalize the texturing and so on. I will introduce as many nodes which I think are important to you. So let's start. After you download zip file from the link in the description, you go to edit, preference, and in add-on section, you install the zip file and enable the animation nodes. There's a second add-on I'm going to use, it's called a self fracture This is built in, in Blender, so you don't need to download anything. Okay, so this is good. And we will start with a UV sphere. And before we fracture that, I need to add two material, one is outside, and another material called the inside. And be aware that UV texture cannot be added later on as after it has been fractured because it's a destructive process. So if you are doing some crazy texturing, so you probably would like to check the shading before fracturing that. Or you have to change that later on. It does not really matter. And you go to the annotate. Hit the end. I will turn on the screencast key so that you can see the shortcuts at the left button corner, if you're curious about that. And I'm going to use surface. You just draw whatever things you want. Uh, basically, at the place where you draw the lines, more cracks will be added to that place. So this is the principle, how this annotated pencil surface is a guide for fracturing. But now, if we directly fracture that, I'm going to do a faster fracture. What will happen is the pieces has been, that have been generated will, ha will have a very unrealistic geometry. So it looks like this, which is very ugly, and you don't want to do this. So what do you also need to do in this case is to go to 3D cursor, so it actually draws a kind of annotation pencil in 3D perspective. So it will cut in volume. You can also move the 3D cursor so that the more perspective will be included. Uh, in this case, it does not really matter. So this definitely looks very ugly, but it somehow works. So it goes to self fracture annotation pencil. Uh, source limit means the amount of pieces that it will be generated. So in this case, it will be 100 pieces, around 100 pieces. It's actually not, it, it varies actually. Another thing is material index. The index always starts from zero. So I will set to so I will set it to one, which means the inside material for new faces. In, uh, there are also other values, but I'm not going to tweak that so far. So I'll just hit OK. And I'm going to go to view and hide this annotation. Uh, maybe we will reuse that in the future, who knows? So now, uh, before we do anything, we would like to check its geometry. So now it looks much nicer. Uh, what about the other pieces? This chunk is actually very huge. But um, um, it's not too bad. I mean, it's not perfect, but I will call that done at this moment. Definitely, you can change more stuff uh, in the meantime. So now I hide this sphere and I'm going to hit A to select everything. And hit M, new collection fractures. And I will disable this collection. I will also enable another collection called the control for future use. So let's go to the animation node. I will again turn on the screencast gaze so you can see it's shortcut. Um, usually you start with no trees. So you have to add a new tree. And one thing you need to be aware, 
is to turn off this always option. Uh, if you always run your node tree, it will basically burn your computer, waste a lot of power. So don't do that. And I'm going to hit Control A to add as many nodes. So collection info and object transform output. And I will name the fractures. If now I put this object into this object socket, then everything will collapse to the location of 0, 0, 0. This is not what we want. So I hit Ctrl Z to offset everything. Uh, be aware if you don't turn off this always, then you have to redo everything again. Unfortunately, this is what happens. Then next thing we need to do is initial transform. So it generates an error because I did something wrong last time. In this case, it just goes to the problem and retry. Potentially, it will resolve everything. Okay. You put the object socket into the object socket and you select all the objects. Goes to an animation nodes and hit from current transform. So basically, it will record a initial transform of all these pieces. So now if you plug the location to location and plug the objects back, everything will stay in their initial location. So nothing will change. But how to animate the explosion part? And I made a very simple demonstration. Uh, there are only three, uh, four nodes in this tree. 3D view is just for you to see the stuff better. And in these node trees, uh, mixed vector nodes is something that I would like to introduce to you. Here you can see a left and a right empties. And I put all their locations into the mixed vector node. And you can see what it does is the vector generated from this node run between these two points. And if you turn off the clamp vector, then it will basically go to infinity along the line that connects to these two points. So this is where we need to use these mixed vector nodes to explode these planets. So how to do that? I need to hit W and the loop through location. Uh, I uploaded a video talking about nodes. So there are lots of settings with nodes and I uploaded a video about that. So if you're curious about what a loop does, you can probably watch that tutorial. Here I won't really explain too much. And it, here I need a mixed vector node. And I'll put this vector into the socket. And I will leave the second vector as it is. So basically everything will break apart according to its word origin. That has a vector of 0, 0, 0. And I'm going to output a vector list. And turn this vector list to the location. So now nothing occurs, but if I change this vector value, then everything will explode. This looks quite nice, isn't it? Then next step is to animate this vector. Uh, however, here comes with a issue that animation node does not attach to any object. It will never show anything on the keyframes. And basically, it just won't work. So you need to use other method, for example, animate node. Uh, animate float in order to control all these values. But uh, it is also, it's also very complicated and there's a, a lot of limitation. So here I'm going to use another method that I personally prefer. Is I'm going to add a plain X and I will name that to control. Uh, it does not matter what it's actually already been called. And I need to object transform input. And select our controls 
use its scale to control this factor. So instantaneously, it will automatically create a separate vector node. And now you can see everything has been changed because the scale is 1. So I need to change this scale to make everything back to normal. But you can see it's not updating the node tree as the number has not been changed. The reason is we turn off the always. If we turn on the always, then it will update very instantaneously. But uh, if you turn on the always, it will basically burn your computer. So the way we need to do is to add a trigger. Uh, I think this is very intuitive. You just need to go to control and you type in scale. Then it will be fine. So now it works again. Um, just uh, for convenience, I will also add control location. And here is one thing that you need to be aware. is rotation is actually a ruler number, while location and scale are all vectors. I personally do not really understand the difference between these two, but uh, you probably can find more references from the menu. So in this case, uh, we hit Control again. Is right click the data and copy data path and Control V. Then it will paste rotation ruler. So now you can do a lot of things and it will update the node tree. You know, we can start to keyframe this scale. So we start with zero. And I will enlarge this timeline. Maybe 220 should be enough. If I go to 50, and I will make that to negative four, something like that. You can tweak all these numbers. It actually does not really matter. And then goes to Wait, actually, at first it should be zero. So, and when it goes to 150, uh, they will continuously expand, and it goes to 200. Everything will collapse. So you can even add a little bit more. I think this is good. However, as it expands, there's very few variation into all these stuff. So I would like to add more variation, but what should I do? Uh, one thing I need is a random vector. I'll firstly generate a list so that it creates different vectors. And if I plug the object into count, then it will generate a count that corresponds to the amount of pieces in the collection of fractures. Uh, if you select this node and you hit W, it goes to Viewer, then you can see its number is 79. And if you plug this vector to locations, you can see how they have been randomly distributed. And this is how we can introduce variation. Uh, in this case, I need a vector math node. I'm going to use this scale to control the scale of random vector as well. But I'm going to duplicate these things. The reason I need to duplicate instead of directly plugging everything is that the loop will, will put everything that connects to it directly or indirectly into the loop. But we are using a loop to change this object transform output if we connect this loop node to random vector, then it will cause a paradox or a contradiction that the loop's output will influence the loop itself. Now, again, they don't have any random changes, but as we explode in that, things become more interesting. Uh, this is probably too much. Uh, but here's one thing that we can do is float math. We divide that, we plug it into and then divide by 2.5 or or a number that in which you think is suitable. It doesn't necessarily be too large. Just a small variation it will be okay I think this part has been done and then we need to also do the rotation part. 
because if we add the rotation, it will be more interesting. And previously, we just mentioned that uh, rotation is actually a ruler instead of vector. So instead of random vector, we need random ruler. And also create a list, plug these lines into the count. And plug this ruler to rotation. And again, to if influence its scale, I probably will basically do the same thing. Uh, I will firstly plug this X. I think it will make it more interesting. So now everything expand with variation and they, they rotate itself and they will collapse. Can multiply numbers using float math. Okay, this seems to be too much. Uh, anyway, I think you get the idea and you can tweak more about this animation later on. Here, I probably just won't spend too much time about this. So just to be aware, the reason I'm doing all these things like plugging scales to scale and rotation is because I can use a single keyframe to control all these things. But uh, if you don't mind, you can actually add more keyframes to each of them. Uh, it depends on your preference. I'm personally lazy people, so I don't want to do that. I think for this part, this is the what else we can do about this ball. I think this is basically done. Then we need to hide these entire fractures, do the next step, which is uh, make another, make a center, the core of our planet. And I will ask that to be, I will call that core. And uh, we can add a material called the core. What we can do is I would like to change its scale. Scale is the only thing that I want to change. Uh, definitely you can keyframe all these scales, but I'm keyframing three numbers. It can be very awkward and it's not procedural. So we are going to use animation node again to change that. I will change the rotation so that it will only stay at the world origin. Then I'm probably using Y to control its another rotation, but the scale. And I'm going to use Y to control its scale. And it will automatically generate a vector from value. So you can use one number to generate a vector. So I'm going back to control. And here we already have a stationary Y being keyframed. But I'm going to post 50. And uh, so we we'll firstly need to start with less than one. Otherwise, they will overlap the fractures. Then probably expand as well. And at the end, it will probably expand more, I suppose. I mean, this is supposed to be the point of this animation. And I think this is fine. So let's see how the animation actually looks. So now they expand, expand, expand. And as it shrinks, that's nice. You can keyframe or you can edit the the curve in graph editor, but uh, essentially I got what I want, so I will just uh, call it done here. I think I will currently stop here. Um, I hope you enjoyed this part one tutorial. Uh, and I will probably see you in part two, doing the animation of light streaks. Thank you. Bye bye.